Hi, I'm Sal McCagliano, Associate Professor of History at Campbell University, former Merchant Mariner, and I teach a course in Maritime Industry Policy at the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. Today, I want to talk about loss at sea, specifically containers and container ships. Uh, the sea is not always a very forgiving entity. Uh, we've been fortunate with the case of the Ever Given. Uh, no lives were lost. Nobody was severe, severely hurt, as far as we know. And I think it's one of the reasons why this story really captures a lot of attention. You don't have a loss of life. The only really implication here is economic and cargo. But the sea isn't like that. Lots of times we do see the loss of lives. Uh, right now, uh, the story in uh, um, mainstream media and right here on G Captain is the story about a lost Indonesian submarine. Uh, submarine of the Indonesian Navy has gone missing, the KRI Nanangala. She's an old 1977 built German submarine type uh, 209. 53 crew members on board and she has gone missing. She was supposed to show up for a torpedo exercise and has not checked in. Uh, there's been sightings of oil on the surface of the water. And right now efforts are underway by Indonesia, Singapore, and Australia to try to locate the vessel. Hopefully it has not slipped below crush depth and hopefully members of the crew are still in live and on board the vessel. They're going to try to locate it. They're doing sonar sweeps right now to try to find it, send down deep submergence vehicles to hook onto it and see if they can evacuate the crew. These types of accidents are all too commonplace, unfortunately. We've seen submarine disasters like this throughout the past 20 years. Uh, this is something that we see happening kind of time and time again here throughout this. And it's extremely difficult to save the crews of submarines because of the depths involved and because of the circumstances. If you look at this list here from uh, submarine losses just since the year 2000, they're long. The Kursk explosion, which is the uh, large Soviet uh, Oscar submarine that destroyed. The Greenville uh, surfacing under a Japanese school ship. Uh, the fire on board Dolphin, an American submarine, the Oklahoma City, another American submarine that collides uh, with a tanker. Uh, you'll see right here other things, the Hartford grounding, fire on a Canadian submarine. The USS San Francisco ran into an undersea mountain that nobody knew about on board. A Russian deep submergence vehicle, uh, the Philadelphia, which collided with a Turkish mer a merchant ship. Uh, all these we see, uh, Newport News, another submarine collides with a Japanese tanker. And all these accidents take place with submarines, various nationalities, Indian, Canadian, US, British, you name it, South Korean, North Korean, Russian. They all have these incidences. The most recent one with a, with a large loss of life was this one here, the ARA San Juan. That's an Argentine submarine. Uh, she was lost in 2017. All 44 of her crew went down and she's a submarine of the same exact type as the Indonesian submarine. So, uh, you know, thoughts go out with that crew. That's always, a, it's always a difficult thing. Life at sea, working at sea, whether you're in the Navy or in the merchant service is a difficult one. But what I want to talk about today is this. This is a story that was in G Captain uh, a little while ago. This is from 2018. Uh, and it's a story about container ship disasters, uh, recent container ship disasters. And I thought I'd run through this. Uh, I've got the story out here in front of me. I thought I'd talk a little bit about it, uh, talk about some of the images here, and really convey to you why it's so dangerous. So this is the Hanjin, Pennsylvania. Hanjin Line was a large container company, went bankrupt in 2016. But the Hanjin, uh, Pennsylvania, is on November 11, 2002. She was on a voyage from Singapore to Germany off Sri Lanka. And she suffered a series of explosions on board. Sorry, I got something in my eye. Series of explosions on board. What they found out was they were loaded, they were containers loaded with fireworks, improperly marked, not adequately marked, didn't know they were on board. They were misdeclared on the ship's manifest. A lot of people are always asking me, what's on ever given? Uh, you can have all the paperwork you want. You don't know what's always in those containers. Uh, ship stayed afloat, but two crew members did die on board. Uh, she stayed afloat, but she was eventually going to be sold for scrap, but she never quite made it, uh, wound up going down, uh, being sunk. Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, she was actually not sold for scrap. Sorry, I got it mixed up with my other ship I'm going to talk about next. She actually was not sold for scrap. She was going to be scrap, but instead she's been rebuilt and now put back into service. And so, again, here's a, a, a disaster very narrowly avoided on board, but with two people killed, again, for improper cargo on board. 
Here's the Hyundai Fortune. Uh, she was rocked by a series of powerful explosions in the Gulf of Aden. Dozen of uh, containers blown overboard. A hull was actually ripped apart on the aft side, on the port side. I can't see in this picture, but on the port side, big hull blown out of it. Royal Netherlands uh, uh, warship actually came on board there to help them fight the fire, uh, uh, save the crew. Uh, there was one crew member who had been injured in, in the explosion on board. Uh, they determined about 1,300 of the 3,000 containers, 3,000 containers, again, ever given 18,000 boxes, uh, excuse me, almost 20,000 boxes on board. Uh, never exactly sure what caused this fire. The ship was scrapped in 2018. Uh, next one here is the MSC Napoli. And this goes back to the issue we talked about with Ever Given, when Ever Given basically found herself up across those two shoals on uh, the two banks with her, with her center dangling over the Suez Canal. Here, the MSC Napoli, uh, 275 meters long, Ever Given was 400. She's got a crack. She cracks her hull right there. She's actually had a crack. And this happens because lots of times when containers are loaded on vessels, the weights are not properly marked. And sometimes they improperly load these vessels with too much cargo in certain points. You start causing stresses. Uh, she was in the English Channel. She was going between Belgium and Portugal when all of a sudden she uh, reported the crack. Uh, all 26 crew members were heloed off. Uh, you see that being done right there. And uh, she was towed over to uh, Lime Bay. Uh, Lime Bay is, is, is an area off the coast uh, where uh, she was eventually uh, uh, basically sunk in that area in Lime Bay, but eventually salvaged. Uh, this is the Rena off New Zealand in 2011. She struck a reef uh, in the Bay of Plenty uh, coming in and uh, about 17 knots. And so you see a couple of things happened here. Not only is she flooding, but because of the list, she's lost containers. You can see the stacks have basically collapsed on her right there. Uh, this is one of the most dramatic pictures uh, we have here. Uh, there wasn't much they can do with her at that point. She basically will break up at that point. Uh, she actually comes apart here. Uh, I don't think I have, nope, I don't have a picture of that. She actually comes apart here and has to be broken up. Uh, there was a big, huge incident here involving the prosecution of the crew on board. Uh, basically, the ship's second officer who was on the helm had deviated from his course, and it took him over the, the reef. Uh, the master and the second officer in New Zealand were both arrested, sentenced to seven months in jail for the disaster. Uh, this is the MSC Flaminia. This is a uh, Mediterranean uh, shipping company vessel. Uh, she suffered a fire rocked by a series of explosions in 2013 while crossing. Uh, this is one of the uh, fatal incident on board here. Four lives were lost. You can see the amount of damage here. One of the things that containers were supposed to do, and they kind of do, is, is minimize fire damage because everything's contained. Everything's inside. Problem is, once you have a fire, they start spreading, and, and the containers almost work like ovens. As they heat up, they can heat the inside of the, what's in the containers. And unfortunately, one of the things we see here is the fire can spread catastrophically. So the entire center part of this vessel is completely gutted. Now, when fire happens below deck, in the containers below deck, there's a lot more you can do. Because those are sealed holes, it holds in many places, you can flood those areas with carbon dioxide, CO2 bottles. They actually have banks of CO2 bottles on these vessels. And through an elaborate piping system, you can flood those compartments, displace the oxygen, knock the oxygen out, you break the fire tetrahedron, and now all of a sudden you don't have a fire on board. Uh, it's, it's a really effective way of fighting fire that way. The problem is on the containers above deck, there's really no good way to do it. Uh, this is one of the most dramatic ones here. This is the MOL Comfort. This is 2013 in the Indian Ocean. Uh, if that looks strange to you, it's because her back's broken. Uh, she cracked right here forward to that stack right there. You'll see she basically cracked herself right there. And this is one of the most spectacular losses there was. She was a large vessel, obviously, at the time, 2008. She was built over 4,000 containers. And we start talking about loads on these big, huge monsters, these 18, 20, 24,000 box vessels. This is what we see here. This vessel sunk slowly over time. She didn't sink right away. The bow actually sank first, but the, the, the stern was actually actually broken half. The bow and stern were both towed separately. But over the course of 10 days, they were towed, and unfortunately, uh, they both don't make it. Uh, both ends were, were, were lost and, and not being able to salvage. Whole series of, uh, I uh, recommend the, uh, the article for you. 
because it's, it's really good. The forward section actually caught fire. Uh, and so the, uh, you started having burning uh, fire on board. Uh, and, and basically what they found out again is, is, is the investors came in and they, they attributed it to basically improper weights on the containers causing stress on the vessel. Again, this is a fairly new vessel. And all of a sudden you have this catastrophic loss on board. Uh, fast forward 2018, the Arabian Gulf. This is the Maris Honum. This is one of the biggest ones we see. This is a 15,000 box vessel. So not quite up to the ultra large container ships that we've talked about, but here, 353 meters, the, the Maris Honum has this fire on board and she, the fire actually runs rav, you know, runs spectacularly out of control on the forward. That's the forward part of the vessel right there. I think I got another picture. There you go. There's some uh, images right there of her on fire. What causes the fire? We don't know. Really don't know uh, 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 what happens. Five crew mem members died on this one. Uh, really a tragic loss. 23 of the crew uh, were saved. Uh, so you lose, you know, five crew members. And again, uh, one of the things that happens sometimes in these containers is you've got this improper stowage. But one of the big issues right now, and again, we we're doing investigations and you're finding more and more about this, lithium batteries. Lithium batteries, you ever seen a video where a lithium battery gets cracked? I'm talking about a lithium battery in your computer, your iPad, whatever you have it in. If you crack it and those cells, there's a thin membrane between the two cells, the positive and negative cell. And what happens is if you break that membrane, they start running and the batteries dump their entire electrical load, all their power, all their energy. And the way they dump energy is in through heat, light, and, and, and basically fire. And unfortunately, that can cause a cascade action. Maris Hanum here is a good example of that. In the case of the Maris Hanum, I should mention too, the uh, company declared general average. And because of the extensive, extensive salvage operation that's in place here, uh, all the cargo that was saved, the other boxes after the forward house, had to pay for part of the salvage. And that is something we know. The other type of accidents we've seen, and this is becoming even more frequent now, is loss of containers. This is the ONE Apis. ONE Apis lost in, in the range of 2,000 containers almost. A massive amount of loss. Basically, she lost more in one voyage than is usually lost in a year. Uh, and this has to do with a very unique type of motion that these vessels experience, these ultra-large container ships experience. Because of the twisting motion and the, the length of them, you actually get situations where the containers, the ship actually twists. And it gets in a twisting motion. And because of the container stack, they start getting this kind of parabolic motion to it. And one of the things you'll notice is how this aft stack is, is leaning to, to starboard, but this middle stack is leaning to port. And that's because those containers collapse different ways. We're seeing more and more of this, these losses of containers on board. And uh, loss of containers obviously is economic. You've lost your goods. There's insurance claims. Uh, it causes wrecks on the vessel, which takes a long time to clear because you can't offload them like you normally would load them. You got to bring in special cranes to do this because you can't use normal container cranes. You've got to repair the damage. And then you have containers loose in the ocean, which doesn't sound like an issue, but most containers don't sink. They're sealed good enough that they'll, they'll retain some buoyancy. And that means vessels can run into them. Uh, large vessels can run into them. Smaller vessels can run into them. Paul Newman did that in, in a sailboat. I think, no, Robert Redford. Robert Redford did it in a sailboat in a movie. So these are hazards to navigation that we're seeing. And these are some of the hazards we see. And this is all being considered when every given went aground. Could we have a fire on board from the containers being shifted? Did we cause structural damage to the hull to get a cracking? Uh, if she listed too far, if, she, if you dredged and she leaned over and threatened to roll, would we have a collapse of the container stacks like this? So all these issues came into play during the salvage, <clears throat> excuse me, during the salvage of Ever Given. But fortunately, none of it came to bear. They were able to avoid it. Smith, along with the Egyptian Suez Canal Authority, were able to get the vessel off. The crew on board Ever Given uh, from, uh, from Evergreen were able to get the vessel up into the Great Bitter Lake where she sits right now. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it about the dangers of work at sea, the dangers particularly in the container trade. We'll be thinking for that crew on board the Indonesian submarine. Hopefully they'll be able to be rescued, get help to them as soon as possible. Because again, dying at sea is one of the worst things in the world. Lonely, it's it, it's cold, it's just, it's a miserable fit, fate for anybody. And and again, it, 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 it's, it's a true tragedy when life is lost at sea, but it happens on a fairly routine basis and it usually does not make the news. 
So I'm Sal McCogliano. Uh, if you enjoyed the video and you liked the video, please subscribe, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos when they come out. Feel free to share the video, spread about, spread word about the channel, get people uh, interested in it. And if you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I appreciate it. I'll have links to all these stories in the show notes. And until next time, stay safe.